Hi guys. Uh, today's devotional is the final part of a, a little five-week series we've done looking at uh, the desires that Jesus has for his followers as he shares with us in John chapter 13 through to chapter 16. Uh, for four weeks we've looked at the set times Jesus has said, I tell you this because, or I say this because. And we've seen four different things that Jesus has uh, been desiring for his followers then and, and, and for us now as his followers. Jesus speaks, he says, to, uh, <clears throat> to, to confirm his followers' faith. Jesus speaks these things, he says, because he wants to, to maximise their joy. And he wants to inspire their courage and he wants to establish their peace for the final one in our, our series to, uh, we're looking at something not that jesus said i say this because but instead we're looking at the actions of jesus and why it is that he does the things that he does and so we're jumping back to to the beginning of this evening the the last supper jesus sits down for a, a meal with his disciples and they begin to eat and then Jesus does something that, that shocks them. He gets up and starts to, to wash their feet. He takes on the role of the servant. The most important person in the, ro the room, the most important person in the world, makes himself a servant doing a menial task. And we see um, Peter's response. Peter says... No, no, you can't do this. You're not going to wash my feet. I won't let you. But Jesus is doing this for a reason. He wants to stimulate in his followers the same sort of love. Imagine for a moment that the queen came around your house and she sits down. At your kitchen table and says oh i'm just gonna nip to the loo and she's up there a while and you go up and you find the queen scrubbing your toilet you'd be horrified you're like no this is not right for you to do this and so in a similar way that, that's peter's and the other disciples response jesus no this is not right and jesus says this is right this is this is why i came and actually, this is what I want you to do. Let's jump into to John 13. Look, listen to verse 12. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now you know these things. You will be blessed if you do them. This great act of service and servitude, Jesus says, is the, the model for them and the model for, for us. Jesus' desire for us is to be people, a people, who love one another. Before we think about that, I just want to stop there and I want to zoom in on Jesus. Because as we think about the love of Jesus, I want us to think about the loveliness of Jesus. When we think of the word loveliness, we can think that that's quite, maybe quite feminine, um, maybe quite soft gentle maybe if you're a, a, a man that's something you think well i'm not sure i want to be <laughs> lovely or something that, that i want to aspire to but jesus as he serves shows his his goodness his greatness i think we've seen a little bit of this recently uh, during the, the, the lockdown uh, with this clapping for the NHS, this recognition of the, the greatness of the NHS that people would serve, would give of themselves, would risk their own lives for the sake of others. And I think it would be right to say that as people have gathered outside their houses to, to clap, 
what we've seen is a recognition of the loveliness of the NHS, of that kindness, of that love. And maybe we haven't appreciated it before, or maybe not as much as we should have done. Well, let me say that as the NHS, so much more is, is Jesus. Jesus is lovely because he, even more so than the NHS, is someone who serves sacrificially. And why do I say more more than the NHS? I'm not putting the NHS down. The guys that work for the NHS, they do such a, a wonderful job. But, but Jesus stoops lower. He starts higher. He has more to lose, more face to lose. It costs him more to serve the disciples on that, that night. It costs him more to, to serve us. This washing of the disciples' feet, this act of love is only a precursor to what Jesus will do a few short hours later when he will go to the cross that greatest act of love and self-sacrifice and i want us for a minute to stop and say to look at jesus and go wow and then i want us to <laughs> consider the thought don't we want to be like that don't we want to have the same loveliness and what jesus does here as he speaks to his disciples and he speaks to us jesus says i want you to to have that same loveliness i want you to be a people that love each other let me read again from from chapter 13 a little later on where jesus will say the the same thing again to his disciples Chapter 13, verse 34, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Jesus desires for his people to imitate, to replicate his love. That people would see in the church a group of men and women boys and girls who give of themselves for the sake of loving other people who go out of their way for the good of others and as we do that jesus says people will know that we belong to him that we are his disciples and we will reflect some of his loveliness we cannot reflect the cross that's not the you know, we're not called to die on behalf of others for, for their sins we can't do that work but jesus before that great act models what we can do that we too can be sacrificial that we too ought to be loving towards one another and as we do that we will be lovely we will be admirable not because we want people to stand and clap us but because we want to show how good jesus is and we will people will recognize in us that we are followers of jesus and he will be glorified in us i hope that's encouraging i hope that's encouraging especially especially if you're in that place where you feel particularly unlovely because of sin because of struggle because of doubts jesus calls us to love one another and there are a thousand practical ways we can do that even in lockdown but he also desires for us to be lovely as we reflect him let me pray Father, we thank you for, for these words and these actions of Jesus. And we pray that we would hear them and that we would uh, do them, that we would be a people, a church that loves one another. 
Lord, that gives of ourselves to the, the benefit of others. And as we do that, we pray that you would uh, cause people to, to see and to say that they must belong to Jesus, for they act like Jesus. Oh, that would be a, a wonderful, glorious thing for us. Lord, for the world to know that we belong to you. Father, we pray that you would do that in us and through us. In Jesus' name and for his glory, we pray. Amen.